Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome once again to Cafeteer. I'm so excited that we are together again redeeming our mornings. Welcome to Cafeteer. We're going to study the word of the Lord. I hope that your coffee is ready and that your hearts are ready as well. It's, it's hot, it's warm, and that you're remembering your love for the Lord this morning. So before we get started, why don't we join our hearts in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for, um, for our time together this morning. Lord, we are scattered right now, but we are gathered in your presence, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just cancel out every distraction that, that um, we have right now, the things that's nagging us uh, to get busy. But Lord, I pray that today we would just learn how to sit at your feet and Lord, just to meditate on your goodness and to receive your mercy today. And I Lord, that you would preserve your word in our hearts as we go about our day to day, you would receive all the glory and honor. Sanctify this time, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to understand your word. And not only that, but to live and be changed and obey it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today, we're going to talk about busyness. Just busyness. Because uh, what I want to do in the coming days uh, is just to look at the church in Ephesus. Remember what Jesus told them. He knows their works, their toil and patient endurance, how they cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested uh, those who call themselves apostles and are not and found them to be false. Jesus said to them, He knows that they are enduring patiently and bearing up for His name's sake and have not grown weary. But then Jesus has this one thing against them that they have abandoned the love they had at first. Um, so they're doing really well. They're, they're doing really good as a church. Their ministries are well. Um, everything is firing on all cylinders. And, and you know what? It, it, you come to think about it, if you're an outsider or you're, you're a first-time visitor uh, to this church, you're, you would be probably impressed. But there's really no hiding before Jesus remembers the senior pastor and you cannot hide anything from the Lord he holds the pastors and the churches in his hands and, and Jesus says you have abandoned the love you had at first so what I want to do in these coming days is just to look at some of the intimacy killers that could be possibly present even in our own life and in our own church what are the intimacy killers and like what I said, no, you might not even notice that you have this in your life. And this thing that you have in your life is killing your intimacy with the Lord. Now, one of the things that's present in our lives that is an intimacy killer, and we don't notice it, you know what? It's busyness. Busyness. Look at what Jesus says. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. It gets intense, no, with every word. I know your work. I know what you're doing right now. But he says, I know your toil. He says, I know your hard work. Meaning to say, I know the effort to that you put in the thing that you're doing. You know what? My mentor, one of my mentors told me that you know you're doing things right when other people think that they can do what you're doing because you make it simple. What they don't see is what you're doing in the background, the hard work that you're putting into the product or the output that you're presenting. They don't see that so that what you present outwardly looks simple, but they don't know the hard work that goes along uh, with that simplicity. Um, so Jesus knows the output. That's, the output is good. Jesus knows the effort that's put into that output, and it is good. And Jesus also saw that this is something that is born out of patient endurance. I mean to say this is not one time big time. This is just this is their lifestyle. They're really working hard for the Lord. In fact, it says there, I know you are bearing patiently and bearing up for my sake, for my namesake, and you have not grown weary. I mean to say other other people would have gone weary doing this but you you're different i know your works i know your hard work i know you're enduring this is a long obedience in the same direction you are very busy but despite of you being busy for me and i see that and i appreciate that that's what the lord is saying in the process of you being busy for me your love for me has diminished through the years how ironic is that 
you can be busy for the kingdom and have no time for the king. Sabi nga, di ba? You can be busy doing all of these things, but all of these things that you're doing actually are distractions from the main thing that you should do. Love Jesus. And you know, in our day and age, busyness has become a virtue. You know, for example, if you are asked to introduce yourself, one of the questions you're asked is, what do you do for living? As if your living is based on what you do. And, and you say, I'm very busy right now. And, and that seems to be a, a, a word of pride. No, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things. You know what? The Bible has a lot to say about sluggards and people who are just slothful. But then the Bible has a lot to say about busy bodies as well. Yung hindi mapalagay. It's restless people. Um, one of my friends, Deacon Ken, shared this uh, meme, no? in our Bible study at one point, uh, sabi dito, I can't remember, do I work at home or do I live at work? How are you doing during this quarantine? Are you working from home? You know, you know, it doesn't really matter where you are. You know, busyness comes to find us. We are wired to be busy. Eh, parang ano tayo, parang sponge tayo ng busyness. If we don't, you know, don't introspect, we could just burn ourselves out with busyness and then the result ironically even if you're busy with the right thing your love for the lord diminishes and what if pa if you're busy about things that are not really related to the lord kung yung busyness nga ng ephesians related to the things of the lord their love diminished what if pa if you're busy about stuff that is really far from the agenda of the lord can you imagine how your love would diminish we're wired to be busy. And you know what? At a certain point, we really have to introspect if it's really healthy for us pa itong busyness natin na meron. And remember the story, Luke 10, 38 to 42. This is the story. Mary and Martha, remember the story? Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered the village and a woman named Martha welcomed him to her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with what much serving serving who serving jesus how is she described distracted by much serving and she's serving jesus let that sink in and she went up to him and said lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone tell her then to help me but the lord answered her martha martha you are anxious and troubled about many things but one thing is necessary Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. How interesting. Here's Martha and all that she's doing is serving the Lord. If Jesus would come to your house, if I don't want to speak for you. I just want to speak for myself. If Jesus were to walk through that door physically, yeah, you bet I'll make him coffee. You bet I'll clean up. You bet, I'll, you know, I'll serve him to the max. And, you know, I can't blame Martha. You know, I would do this with joy. But notice what, how he's described. She was distracted with much serving. So busyness pala has a way of robbing us of the important things in life. Number one, it, it, robs, it robbed Martha of the opportunity to learn from Jesus. So while Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, she's out there doing stuff. You know, I recognize that in our church. That's why last uh, few years ago, we started 8 a.m. service. Why? Because we have Sunday school teachers and they're very busy serving the Lord by teaching our kids to the end that they don't get to worship with us anymore. So I said na even though the, there are going to be few people who would attend the 8 a.m. service and this would be an added, uh, not naman burden, added effort, added work for me, I, I'll be glad to do it. Because it's very important for people to sit at the feet of Jesus. And even service can distract you from learning from Jesus. Secondly, look at uh, the, look at what happened to ano, Martha. She, this business robbed her of her posture. Look at how she talked to Jesus. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? I don't think she meant to be mean, but I think she forgot who it is she's talking to. 
Inuutusan niya na Panginoon, di ba? <laughs> She's already commanding God, right? Uh, Lord, you know, don't you care? And sometimes you do that, no? Uh, um, when we get peeved, that's how I am. No? When I'm really busy and I see other people not busy, I get really annoyed. And I go to God and complain, won't you change their hearts? Why, why don't they get what I'm getting? Why don't they become more like me? And I forget, I'm talking to Him and I should be asking Him to change me. It robs her of her posture before the Lord. It first robbed her of an opportunity to, to learn and then it robbed her of her posture uh, before the Lord. And, and also, it, it robbed her of her perspective. Because in her perspective... Mary was the one that is distracted. But apparently, she's oblivious to the fact that she's really distracted by this good thing that she's doing. And notice how the Lord responds her. The Lord does not scold her. Huh? Look at this. The only w- reason why the Lord speaks to her is because she brings this up in the first place. She's the reklamo. She's the first one who complained. Jesus was not scolding her. Jesus was responding to her. Yeah? And what did Jesus say? Martha, Martha. That's different from Martha, Martha. No, it's Martha, Martha. No exclamation point. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things. Masyado kang abala. But one thing is necessary. Remember in the, the letter to the Ephesians in Revelation? One complaint from the Lord. Here, one thing is necessary. What's the necessary thing? Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. So there's a good thing that you can do and there's a better option. It's good to serve, but it's better to serve having sat at Jesus' feet. You know, sometimes, a lot of times, business is a badge of honor for us. But you know, in the Lord's economy, you have to really check your busyness. Because being busy leads to being stressed being stressed leads to being irritable Irritab- irritability leads to conflict conflict leads to anger anger leads to rage explosion depression and all of these things guard your busyness it's the doorway to many woes so here's my admonition today before you leave instead of being busy B and C right Instead of being busy, B and C. Number one, B. Focus more on your being than your doing. What do I mean? Focus more in you being a child of God, being a student of Jesus, being a disciple of the Lord, being conformed into the image of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Focus on your being. What are you being right now? One of my professors said, what you are now, what you are being right now is what you are becoming. If you're anxious right now, you're becoming an anxious person. If you're angry right now, you're becoming an angry person. How is your being? Because your doing will stem from your being. So that's number one, B. Number two, C. Ibig sabihin, tignan. Behold the Lord. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. She has the perspective. She is seeing Jesus through the lens of a disciple. You know, she's getting all of this uh, teaching from the Lord. She in see, she's seeing Jesus with a fresh lens. Take time to see Jesus. Would you take time to see Jesus right now? And and, and I pray, and, and this is something that's giving me joy, sharing devotions with you every day. But don't you for one minute... Right? Outsource your intimacy with the Lord to me. I cannot be intimate with the Lord for you. You have to see the Lord for yourselves. So you get yourself one of these. Right? This thing that I'm sharing to you right now is a product of me spending time looking at this book, seeing the Lord in this book, beholding the glory of the Lord. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad to share with you devotions every single day. But don't you... Don't you begin to outsource your quiet time to me. Do it for yourself. You can behold Jesus for yourself. You can see Jesus for yourself. And you know what? He has something to say to you.
He has something to say to you. So instead of being busy, B and C. I hope you have a good day today. But before you leave, let's join our hearts in prayer. Lord, the moment we say amen to this prayer, busyness will be right before us. But Lord, help us to take a stand against busyness. You know, it's good to be busy about the right things. And Lord, you call your children into action. You don't call us to be sluggards. You call us to be hard-working people. But Lord, before we can be hard-working for you, help us, Lord, focus on our being. What are we before you? What are we, what are we becoming before you? Help us to see you and behold you for the good God, good Lord, good Savior, good friend that you are. Help us to be, help us to see you today. We commit our day to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope your coffee is still hot. I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.